Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Simpilot. You might get a bit of an echo for a second here, but don't worry about that. That will go away shortly. Um, thank you all for joining us today. And welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Sim Pilots. Looking forward to this one. We are going to take a flight from here in uh, Puerto Montt down to Puerto Natales, which is in Patagonia. They're both in Chile, so we're going to fly with this Chilean airline, Sky Airline, which uh, I'm looking forward to. Let me just check everything is working. There we go. Yes, everything is working. Good stuff. Right, so hello to you all. So hello to uh, Jamie. Hello, random watermelons the route is now as a pinned message on the chat mr cyclone chris um pass <laughs> uh frank good to see you here as well thanks for posting the route dave geimer great to have you um join us ed has i'm great to see you uh, crash ed good to have you uh back we had a big good evening to you dennis hello to you as well 320 planes hello and uh, usa flyer toxic igloo foo great to have you here as well um, WB Travel says, I was there two weeks ago. I was in Puerto Natales two weeks ago on this approach. Expect stunning scenery, high crosswinds, and a very, very short runway. That's exactly why we're going. Looking forward to that. Um, Cube says, flight time around one hour, 50 minutes. Exactly, yep. That's exactly what we're expecting to do today. We're in a slower aeroplane <laughs> than we're used to these days. Uh, Streamlabs is alive, which is good news. Lauren V and Andy H1302, thanks so long for coming along to moderate. Uh, anyone think this Boeing pilot can fly that contraption? Yes, this is going to be, in a way, sad. <laughs> um, you're going to see how much i've had to forget um in order to learn a new airplane <laughs> it's something that um throughout my career i've only changed planes a couple of times but i've met many pilots obviously around me who've also changed airplanes and you'll be chatting to someone who you've been on the same airplane as for a long time and, and they've now recently moved along to a different one and you'll be chatting to them about something that happened to you and they won't they won't they'll get a, they'll give you a blank sort of expression because they won't remember the flap settings or what what was the auto brake settings that you had in the airbus airbus and all of this sort of thing you know it's amazing uh, it sounds like you you know you it sounds simple enough right but it, it doesn't work like that you you have to forget this stuff in order to um move along into a new a new aircraft and, and way of operating and it hurts to to keep it in your head <laughs> so I, in prep for this, I um, loaded up the Airbus a couple of times, but uh, it is not going to come as naturally as we hoped. It probably, hopefully, we'll, we'll slip back into it eventually, but um, yeah, it's it's surprising. It's surprising. Already, after only a few months, I'm having to think about doing things in the Airbus, whereas before, uh, the Airbus was relatively natural. Um, not that that's a good thing, but that's just how it was. It was something I, I knew how to do, um, mostly. <laughs> not always, but mostly. Uh, that's all good to see you from real through 20 pilot to real 78 pilot long journey indeed it has been yeah lloyd hayden good to have you here as well thanks for joining us um piano learner good to see you as well dev lucas seeing that ie jet start in the background makes me excited to get for that phoenix update indeed yes that would be uh, that would be lovely uh flight fix will follow down the jet star um <laughs> stream sniping indeed <laughs> but uh, there's no problem at all um and andy says don't beat yourself up i have a week off and forget where all the switches are in my office excellent <laughs> good to know <laughs> yeah it's uh it's gonna be something else but uh let's see and lauren v is gonna have a shower see if i'm um, in the air by the time they get back <laughs> money's on that yeah i highly doubt that this is a cold and dark airplane uh, and one i no longer fly but still a nice livery i had to to um use this livery because when i first saw it i was very excited to see it because it is uh in a similar it's got a similar green to one of my favorite liveries the jmc livery but also has that lovely green tail and the real airplanes do have this green tail and this is the only one i found for the neo uh, that came with that actual actually painted which is one of uh, paddy's usual hallmarks is uh, actually painting wings and <laughs> tails in certain colors but yeah i think it's uh i think it's it's nice i like it when airlines put a bit of effort in like that painting an extra bit of the airplane uh i don't mind the southwest livery either though to be fair i think that's quite nice that that one that new one they've got uh, but yeah, there we go. So, 320neo. Now, this is the development version of the fly-by-wire A32NX, which you're going to have to update me on this. I believe has come a, a long way since I last flew it. Um, I'm expecting it now to have a new flight deck. Um, and I, it does, and it's lovely. So, let's jump in. Here we go. I mean, um, yeah, it's all just looking absolutely fantastic. Um, I believe the big change was this panel here, um, but you can all tell me uh, what 
what else I'm missing because I've not been up to date with Flyboy. I know they're working really hard and this is still an excellent airplane. As I understand it, I, 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 you know, I could always embarrass myself and find out I don't have the new <laughs> flight deck. I've done that before. But um, I don't know. It looks fantastic to me, well, whichever version I am using. But this is the latest development version. So my understanding was, if I just check, I don't think there's another version I could have. So um, yeah, I think this one has as a new they mainly fix the glare shield as far as I know is now the correct geometry yeah that's it this this front view looks super this doesn't have that same sharp angle it used to have which is yeah which is definitely more pronounced uh, sorry more pronounced in the default Sobo A320 uh, so yeah I really like it I think it looks great um, still uh, I'm, I'm sure some of the lighting changed as well um, which you can see in some of the shadows and the way it's lit, but we shall see about that. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting confused. But anyway, it looks lovely. Really happy with it. EFB up and running. We're going to be the Aerosky 338 um, A320 Neo for this flight. So there you go. We're pretty heavy. Zero fuel at 62.5, cruising at 390. Um, so yeah, about just under two hours flight time, as I say. So let's see if we can remember how to turn this airplane on. Uh, so, most like normal, masters off, landing gear lever down, wiper selectors off, and batteries going to auto. Ah, there's a noise we miss. <laughs> Goodness me. Stand up power coming on, weather radar off, and the gear levers should be down. There we go. Parking brake should be set, which it is. Good. And we'll just check the oxygen, oil, hydraulics, flaps, speed brakes. Good. I think that's about right. So now let's get the overhead panel set up. So we'll go nav, nav, nav. Oh, now this off light shouldn't be, I don't think you should see it like that. It seems a bit too obvious to me relatively hidden but there we go off 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 ground control on cruise fly on we'll take nav lights beacon off strobes to auto all the other lights off emergency exit lights arm ah i see they've changed the uh, light down here no portable electronic devices we'll put that into auto which was the old smoking sign nick k thanks so much for the five pound super chat really appreciate it nick says i'll miss it live unfortunately doing sound for panto Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, have a coffee on me. Have a good stream. Thanks so much, Nick. Enjoy um, doing the panto. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that'll be good fun. And uh, this will be available on YouTube when you get back. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Thanks for coming along to say hi. Uh, Trouble Demon says, I can't wait for the fly by wire A380. No, me either. Indeed, me either. George Lumpkin says, moved house, ready for a relaxing stream after moving between cities. So tired. That does sound exhausting. I've moved around a couple of times and yeah, it is it's tough stuff, isn't it? As we all know. So yeah, well done. And uh, yeah, have a nice break. Have a cup of tea or something. Uh, how should I calculate the flex temperature? Any ballpark calculations? Well, um, we'll talk about that when we get to performance. Good question. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit tricky to give ballpark. There's just so many variables, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, right. Anti guys can stay off. Probably going to hit off. And thank you again, Nick K, for the very kind super chat. Um, Kevin Pressure is in auto. Both packs are on. We're actually going to turn those off for now. Um, no, we wouldn't do that, would we? We can leave those on. We've got center power on. Generators on. Fuel pumps. I'm going to turn them on now. No one ever does, but that is what it says to do. And then we can run our fire tests. Something we don't have to do on the 787. Hooray! Something the 78 does for us. And all of these are on. Good. Moving down to the glare shield. Let's get some lights on. It's funny. Now I'm off this airplane. I can see why no one could ever find these lights. <laughs> these little uh, dials down here. They seem obvious to me when I was on the airplane. But um, yeah, of course, they're really not. They're quite well hidden. Let's get all the integral lights up. You don't have to fiddle with the lights on the 78 either. It's all done through that master switch. It's very, very good. Very good system. I like it a lot. 
how long does it take to align during turnovers or does it remain in nav? Uh, during short turnarounds, you tend to leave the Airbus in nav. You can do a short align where you turn it off and on within five seconds and it would take just a couple of minutes to realign. If you do a full align, it can take anything up to sort of 15 minutes. It's usually less than that and it still depends on how far you are from the equator. Uh, but yeah, you need to give yourself a good 10 minutes really at least for the full align. And that means leaving them off for a long enough time and then resetting them. Mango says you don't need wide body to do long haul these days. 321 at long range or XLR are popular for long haul. I know. I'd rather do it on a long haul airplane though. They are more comfortable uh, in terms of the way they ride turbulence. They also fly faster. Um, you, uh, you'd you be surprised the time difference it makes to go over the Atlantic in an Airbus 320 versus a 330. It does indeed feel strange to be back in a 320, Lorenzo. It does indeed. Uh, right, the lights are on. I'm going to set the Q&H constraints. I'm going to worry about the FCU shortly. I am going to be using my uh, mini FCU. Supplied by mini FCU for that uh, was a review unit. So yeah, um, uh, I'm looking forward to trying that out. And constraints on that side. Leave the rest alone. Maybe we'll set a VOR up. Good. PFDs are lit. ND. I'll have terrain. Q&H1019. We don't do that yet. Oh, we put on the Boeing, but we don't now. Gear down. Parking brake pressure is on. These are all normal. I'm going to go straight to FMGC. Good. That's fine. That's fine. That's off. In zero. Parking brake on. Right, I think we're there. And that can be on above. Yeah, good stuff. Right, CDU time. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. So yeah, if you're joining us, what have I titled this? Real Airline Pilot Flies the A321X Live. So I used to fly the Airbus A320 and uh, six months ago, well, a bit more than that, um, but a, a while ago, I moved over to the Boeing 787 after years and years on the Airbus. Um, so this is my first time back in an Airbus since then. And yeah, you're going to see me <laughs> struggle my way through. Right, we've got the active database. What does the at position on the IRS do and when is it used? Ah, good question. So at do, 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 do. at is attitude so the irs's are oh, that's not good let's do that one again <laughs> um you don't mess around with these switches um yeah the irs's are gyroscopes basically and we use them to provide our artificial horizon so artificial horizon one artificial horizon two which you can see has gone blank because i just fiddled with it so uh it's realigning and then you've got artificial uh, number three, which runs in the background. You've also got a backup gyro here. So you've actually got four artificial horizons available to you. So in at mode, all it will do is provide the artificial horizon. So if the IRS part of it, which is a navigation part of it, is broken, then you would run it in the nav mode. So that's the, uh, sorry, the at mode. So that's why you've got two different options. Nine times out of 10, no, in fact, 99 times out of 100, you'll run it in nav. But every now and then there'll be a reason to put it into at because of a failure of the navigation side of it. Uh, but you can still recover some useful information in the at mode. It's just a simpler mode where it can just give you level, but it doesn't know where it is or where it's going, which it does when it's in nav. Good. So, right, back to data. We've done init diff strip we're on to now, and I'm going to have to do that or I won't be able to do it. Did you get to fly the A321 Neo back then as well, or just 320, 320 Neo? I flew pretty much all the variants of the Airbus, or I have over my career flown pretty much all the variants of the Airbus. So uh, I haven't flown 18s because they're rare. But yeah, the Neos, 20s, 21s, 19s. Steven says, my mini FCU finally arrived a couple of days ago. It's great. Yeah, I think it's really quite something. There we go. Flight plan uplinked. So we're going to be Aerosky 338, cost next 24, 390. From SCTE to SCNT, also an SCCI. That's aligning. Do a wind request, which I think is going to work. No, not the 330s. I was on the, the I'm talking about the 320 family. Thanks, Love Allied Gaming. The baby bus A318, exactly. Also, I've noticed, by the way, I think they've added this fly by wire because it's got the correct markings down here on the armrest. So you would use these rollers on the outside of the armrests to position it uh, and then the rollers would actually move this dial and that would adjust the angle and height of the armrests so yeah this is not anywhere near my position for flying <laughs> and same for the pedals uh, they've got the numbers here 
something that Boeing does not have, sadly. You have to just sort of know where you put your stuff or, or feel it. Um, this is quite a good system. You just put your numbers in. You just sort of align this with your number and you know you'll be in roughly the right place. Doesn't work for the height of the seat, though. Chris Smith says, kind of crazy. Started by stumbling across your videos a year ago and now we're flying on VATSIM together. Thanks for your contribution. You're very welcome. Thanks for flying along. Great to hear you've uh, you've, you've made it all the way into VATSIM. Fantastic. Uh, there we go. There's the wind. So that is data and then it's A. Then flight plan. Let's load it in. How wide are those seats in an A320? Chris asks. They're very wide. These are great seats. Um, I would say I find them a little more comfortable than the Boeing 787 seats. They d these recline quite far back, um, but the only advantage, the 787 has two advantages. It has squidgy armrests. These are both solid plastic. They're not that comfortable, um, but there's a reason for that, which is that they have to be precise for the side stick. The Boeing doesn't have to be because it's a yoke. Um, let me load in my route. Do unload, import flights and brief. I looked at doing Santiago to Puerto Natales, but it's a bit far for a stream. <laughs> That'd be about three hours flight time. And uh, yeah, the timings didn't work out. So there we go. We are there. Nice short runway. Oh, actually, it's not really. It's quite long. This is a relatively well-equipped airport. Um, but there's our departure. We're heading south. We're expecting to go by Gutin, which puts us onto the Gutin departure. All we need to do is grab the local weather. And I am on VATSIM, so let's just see. There's no controllers around here. So let me just grab the weather for SCTE. Talk amongst yourselves, Puerto Mont. It is afternoon there. Oh, it's morning there, so they... No, afternoon. Uh, there we go. It's very strong southerly, so we'll be taking off on runway 17. Perfect, down the runway. So let's put that in flight plan. So departure, one seven. And I think, oh, these arrows. Something Boeing does better, I would argue, is the arrows. There's too many arrows here. Why can I go left and right and up and down? <laughs> um, yes, Gooty for Bravo or for Charlie. One seven, at above 800, down to Gutin. I think we do the Bravo. Or is the Bravo? Oh, let's do the Charlie. As we have the chart. Insert. That takes us to Gutin. And then from Gutin, if we go to our view, I was expecting to go to Kamek. Nope, that's not how it works on this. We go clear, and I cleared its continuity, and there it is. USA Flyer says, I'm sorry to repeat my message, but on a 787 and tried to get a photo in the cockpit, but the flight attendant wouldn't let me in. The pilots get annoyed by it. Um, well, that depends when it is. As long as... It, <laughs> uh, no, pilots don't normally get annoyed by it. It could be that there was a reason the cabin crew wanted to get you off the airplane, i.e. there was a, a time they were trying to get the airplane turned around in, or... Um, if the gate was going to close, i.e. the gate stuff wanted to close the doors further up. Uh, it could also be, you know, obviously it has to be after the flight only. Um, you know, you're not going to, not reasonably going to get there before the flight because pilots will be busy after the flight. Um, normally it's fine. Yeah, so um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Uh, I will use the eye tracker for this flight. I would indeed. Kelpie, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. I really appreciate it, Kelpie. I hope you're doing well. Good to have you again. And howdy to you. Thanks so much for coming along. Um, so that is our departure. And we can actually being an airbus we can put in here the arrival now correct me if i'm wrong i don't think final app works in the a32x in approach mode at the moment is that correct i haven't been able to get it to work so i've been going with this um so we'll be doing the vor in the manual sense which is no problem by the Bowden arrival and then in via it's meant to be mood ass uh, but we can always update that when we get there. I would imagine it's next then. 
So that's flight plan. Diff's secondary flight plan doesn't work. Radnav, not worried about for departure. Um, it's a RNAV departure, so there's really not a lot we're going to bother typing in there. Just let it auto-tuned. Diff's rear init B time. So time to load up the aircraft for performance. So we go into our EFB. Do, do, do. Let's connect the jet bridge and the fuel truck. So we're all ready to go. We have got a ground power unit. We're only on the ground power right now. Let's hope it doesn't go dark. I'm going to get the AP up and running just in case it does. One, two, three. Window seat. Good to see you, window seat. It's like riding a bike through Johnny pilot. You'll never forget. Hopefully. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> and thank you again to Kelpie for the very kind super chat. Really appreciate it. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, right. Do, 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 do. There's plenty of chat going on, so I do apologize. I won't be able to keep up with it all. Uh, that is correct. No final app. Thanks, Grey Shirt. Good. That's uh, what I was thinking. Good. Uh, have you ever been recognized by your voice on a flight? Um, yes. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Kelpie says, by the way, I heard Flyby320 got an update. Any big changes? Yeah. So this is the new sort of visual interior. This lovely glare shield now. I think it looks great. And they put in these numbers. This, is, I'm sure this is new. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I'm curious as to what we're going to get. Because um, we're also waiting on the Innibuilds A320neo. Is that correct? That was out for a while and disappeared. Um, if anyone can tell me what happened there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, there we go. So let's go to fuel. I can import it. We need 6.6 .6 tons. I'm actually going to increase that. I'm going to take a ton, 7.6 tons, because I know the conditions are windy and I certainly want another go before heading to our alternate. I think we'll probably save fuel on that. Let's go to... Nope, not that much. Let's go to 8 tons, in fact. Because this is not a your usual destination. 8 tons, refuel, payload. We're going to be heavy. Popular, popular route. Uh, imports. Uh, we'll do it instant. Boarding just. completed. There we go. Boarding completed. Oh, it's full, full, full. <laughs> That's what Simbrief gave me. Every seat taken. Fantastic. Now, I can go to. Do we have a performance calculator on this? I don't think we do, do we? Ground speed data is all and landing. Right. There's now Packer out there. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck, on behalf of myself, your captain. Uh, Atul says, in real life, do you use the GPU AP when on 320? You use the GPU as long as you can. And now we've got passengers aboard. We've given it a little time to warm up. I'm going to put the APU bleed air on and get rid of the ground power. And now they can take that away. Because around now, they'd want to cool up and get rid of that. I don't know why my terrain isn't loading. I thought I had that all turned on. Ah, I did not start the Simbridge. Don't need that. We've already done that. Should have eight tons on board. Fuel. Eight tons, yeah. Oh, there it is. It's up there. I was looking down here because that's really... <laughs> oh, dear. Oh dear. LB4500, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Really, really appreciate it. LB says, thank you for the great, thanks for the great streams and tutorials. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for the uh, support in the channel with that super chat. Really appreciate it. Very kind of you. I hope you're doing very well. And I'm glad the tutorials have been useful. That's the pushback system. Just making sure I haven't missed this calculator. Navigation charts, ATC, failures, checklists. Nope. Nope. It's uh, it's not in here. So that's no problem because it's actually a strong headwind, 18 degrees, and it's a long runway. Uh, I know exactly what to expect for that sort of a takeoff. Um, 
yeah that would be no issue but what i do want to do is put in the weights so nice and easy you can just do that and drop them in block fuel of eight tons and thanks again lb4500 for the uh, 10 dollar super chat really appreciate it trouble even says i like the calculator in the phoenix indeed yes the phoenix one is very good it's very good Doesn't feel like riding a bike anymore. <laughs> no. Uh, good. So there we go. Uh, take away 68.2. Landing at 64.5 tons. Uh, it's got a heaven of zero because we've loaded the winds in. So diff's written. That's a nit B. A finally performance. So I'm going to go flap one. And I'll just do. Let's do a medium flex of 60. And then I can just drop the speeds in. Because with that headwind on that length runway. At these temperatures 17. Uh, that'll be no problem at all. Uh, and there we go. This rip, that's performance page done. So, back to our ground stuff, wherever that was. We can get rid of the ground power unit. Away it goes. Let's just check on that sim. No one's on that sim. So, we should be on 1228. We are good. Uh, and let's finalize then with a bit of a, a setup of what we're actually going to do. So, we're going to taxi out, short taxi, north, alpha, and then go full length, southerly take off, 2,600 meters. Um, and with flap one, I can be confident that that's going to give me the best performance once we're in the air. Um, if there was a terrain right in front of us, then we'd need to reconsider. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, we'd need to reconsider that for um, after takeoff. But we can actually see as beautiful as Chile is this direction is not not particularly concerning oh look at that traffic that's am excellent and we have a ever attracting <laughs> nose gear there and another sky bus excellent so yeah it's a lovely day isn't it really amazing weather this is real time real weather um, so yeah we'll taxi out that way um, and we will by this departure, the Gutin departure for Charlie. Uh, now, what the difference is for Charlie from 117. Climber track 174 until 800 feet. Let's just check it through in here. So we'll go flight plan, not legs. 800 feet, and we'll go to plan. This is a slightly easy way. The Boeing, you have to then click step, just another thing you have to do. 800 feet, then make our turn. Track 174, 800 feet, left turn, Tango Echo 188, there it is, to Gutin and inset the airway. No stop altitude on here. Uh, transition, altitude is 10,000 feet, at above 3, no, that's not us. At above 4 at that one, at above 7, at above 110. So I'm just going to put in 110, which we need to set standard to. So there we go. And I can do that on my FCU, I don't know why I'm doing that. These are all dashed out, which is correct because we have. Climb and nav arms, 135, 141, FD2. Good stuff. Um, the terrain, not particularly concerning on this departure, unusually. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Trouble Day. Uh, I think that might be missing some of your names. Sorry there, Trouble Damon. For the 10 Canadian dollars, really appreciate it. Trouble Damon says, a coffee for your return trip. Thank you so much, really, really appreciate it. Thanks for coming along and thank you for supporting the channel. That's very kind, Trouble Demon. I hope you're doing very well. And thanks for coming along today. I would certainly enjoy that coffee. <laughs> there we go, terrain's working. That's good news. So back to Arc. Uh, the, that is the FSTL traffic. This logo up here. Those wondering. Um, good. And then we'll head south. And the minimum safe altitudes on this departure are not shown on here. We'll just fly the departure. Interesting. Interesting way Jefferson do it. Good. Right. Now they have very simplified checklists here, but we can certainly use them anyway. Cover preparation. So gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity. We have 8,000 kilograms. Seat belts. They should be on. And that's why we have checklists. Everything else is as it is. Yep. Uh, eight is are in nav. Barrow ref are uh, on 1019. And just check all three definitely are in nav after playing with them earlier. Good, that's the cockpit preparation. Checklist complete. Next is the before start checklist. Uh, 
uh, which we'll do in a moment once we're ready to go. Good, so let's get the ground equipment clear then. Goodbye fuel truck, goodbye jet bridge. I can close up the door. If you set the altitude on the screen, does the mini change as well? Yes. Uh, the mini does. So if I put that to 10, yep, changes us on the mini. It's very cool. Uh, good, so let's set up our camera. Do, do, do. Some nice wing views on the fly by wire, as always. There we go, lovely. And I can see some chocks out there, so let's get rid of those. Oh no, maybe they're going to stay. Let's go through to pushback. Pushback system on. We don't have anything else. Let's call it a tag. Build chocks are gone. There we go. So that automatically happens. So we're now pretty much ready to go. So let's run through our flow. So thrust levers are at idle. Windows are definitely closed. Beacon comes on. Transponder. Put it to auto. I think that was it. Was there anything else that happened in that flow? <laughs> Goodness me. It's incredible. I actually... That flow is... is almost missing it was quite it's quite a complex flow to pressurize the boeing and so parking brake on take off speeds and thrusts we've got 35 40 and we're going with about one flake 60. windows closed beacon on four start shed is complete right let's go we're going to push back onto alpha Bottom on traffic, Aerosky 338, pushing back uh, from the terminal, facing north on Alpha. Right, let's see if we can make this work. So, brakes released. Let's go backwards, please. Ryan says, I've been watching so many flights and videos since I've sent my PC away, missing it. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> That's what happens. Oh, this is a nice slow pushback. We might be able to keep up with this one. And we're just going to face north up there. Let's get the engine started. So one at a time, sadly. This is an Airbus 320. So that's what we do. We'll go with engine number two. Let's see if that works. <laughs> There it goes. Excellent. In real life, you typically you wouldn't use paper. Most airlines will have a either an application or some form of electronic way of doing the the performance of takeoff. George is using the mini FCU. Is impressed. Yeah, I'm really impressed with, the, with it as well. I really like it. Uh, 320 Sim Pilot Superfan says, unfortunately I wear glasses so I can't get an ATPL in the UK, but at least I have the flight simulator. You can get an ATPL if you wear glasses. It is possible. Push back up to 30 minutes just to make a new record. Indeed, I'm pretty impressed. I wasn't going to say anything though. Not sure why we're turning this way, so let's get get the turn in. Not sure what happened to uh, our southwest friend either. Starting engine number one. It's not the left engine, it's engine number one. Big difference. Very hard for me to get right on the Boeing, not to say one and two, they're left and right on the Boeing.
uh, jet star five to tango stand three pushing back to face north on alpha Belt traffic, Southwest 208, uh, pushing back after the Jetstar uh, to l 2 Belt. l traffic, Southwest 208, uh, pushing back onto Alpha. I'll wait for the uh, Sky and Jetstar to clear um, north onto Alpha before I push back onto it, l 2 Oh yes, my mic is still muted indeed. <laughs> that was so you could listen to the engines. Uh, I'm going to say thank you so much to uh, USA Flyer 94 for that super chat. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm really glad that you've been enjoying the videos. And uh, USA Flyer said your tutorials have been incredibly helpful in deepening my understanding of the HP20. Small super chat as a token of my appreciation for all those great videos and loving the new 787 content. Really appreciate it. Um, Thank you for uh, that very, very generous super chat. Really, really kind of you. And I'm glad you enjoyed the tutorials, and I'm really glad you're enjoying the 787 um, videos as well. 787 uh, tutorials are uh, still in progress. I was working on the next one, and then my computer didn't play ball, so that did not uh, happen. <laughs> but I, I will get that one done soon. That's going to cover, obviously, the climb and the cruise. So, yeah, 787 content is coming. It is. I have been trying. <laughs> um, but thank you, USA Flyer, again, for that super chat. Really generous. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, stuff that you missed while I was muted. I set the trim, <laughs> um, which is set. And we say goodbye to the tug. And I think that was about it. And I'm just hoping my after-start flow was correct. APU off. Arm the speed brakes. Flaps to one. Rudder trim to zero. Let's do the after-start checklist. Anti-ice. Not required. Ecamp status. Nothing there. So that is checked. Uh, otherwise known as recall on the Boeing. Uh, pitch trim, we've set 33 and rudder trim is at neutral. That's the after start checklist complete. Next will be the taxi checklists. Now there's a lot more to do during the taxi on the Airbus than the Boeing, but there we go. We can hear you now, excellent. Thanks, Piano Lena. Have you ever flown out of Birmingham? Yes, I have. USA Flyer says, no worries, loving the short hauls on the 320. Yeah, absolutely. I like, the 320 is always a joy, but glad you're enjoying it. And thank you so much again for that super chat. Right, let's go. So... Let me just do a bit of the old reset. There we go. And I just moved the microphone out of the way a little bit. It does slightly upset the eye tracker because it obviously blocks my face. Uh, right. Puerto Montt traffic, Aerosky 338 taxiing runway 17. So, right side clear, left side clear. Brake released. 
Let's go. Let me know how the audio is. Do you need more sound for the airplane? Right, this is the Airbus, so we do have to do a brake check. All good. Good stuff. Right, let's run the flight controls. I actually quite like doing the flight controls before we taxi on the Boeing. I think it it's not as slick because obviously you have more to do, but I don't know, it does seem to work well. It makes the taxi out quite straightforward. Of course, you do have a lot to focus on on a big airplane like the 787 during the taxi. That's the flight controls. And we would, of course, do the rudder. Um, there's no airport map I can zoom All traffic, in American on. Forces gate pushing back between north on Alpha. Awesome. Everyone's, everyone's going now. I'm actually at the front of my own queue, which is good. That rarely happens. Should have put the taxi lights on. And uh, so, yeah, little updates. Going from the runway. Uh, no change to the departure. Goodness me, this little brief. On the Boeing, we would check the performance page, the legs page, talk about stuff engine procedures. There's none of those to apply to this one. I will set the brakes to RTO or max, not RTO. Oh dear. Uh, let's get around this corner and we'll run the checklist there. If you are enjoying, do please leave a like. It makes a big difference to the channel. Right, around we go. A little simpler to taxi the Airbus. You don't have to do the whole oversteering thing as much. 321s, you would do it a bit, but you can see that even there, look, we're, we're basically on that line. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. You can just drive the cockpit around. The 78, you have to really get the nose past, and it can be quite a challenge to, to judge it all perfectly. Right, brake is set. We're not quite at the holding point, but that'll do. Uh, good. So, cabin needs the thing wrong. And take a config, put to windshield. I'm really pushing the head tracking now. It's pitch black, got a microphone in front of me trying to do the smallest switch on the flight deck. There we go. Um, and we'll do the taxi checklist. Flight controls are checked. Flap setting, we've gone for one plus F. Radar, British windshield on. Engine mode, select norm. EKMMO, take off no blue. That's the taxi checks complete. Good, right, before we line up, we'll put the landing lights on. Strobe lights on. And some airlines would give the camera crew a bing. Take off runway, one seven, I can see that. Oh yeah, TCAS, TARA. Please prepare for takeoff. And packs are going to be on. Oh. That's the line of checks complete. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, we're ready to go. It's clear on the runway. Got a strong headwind. It's clear on the approach. Puerto Montt traffic, Aerosky 338, taking off runway 17, southerly departure. Brakes released. Let's go. Love all the sound effects they have on this uh, 3, 2, and X. I am using the Mini FCU. Ah, yes, eye tracking. Stand by. Let's see if I can get that ready quick enough. Definitely done that. Overdone that. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe we're okay. Good stuff. Hold that there. It might be. Oh, I might need to recalibrate it. It's probably slightly above where I'm actually looking. I'm looking right here right now. Um, but we shall see. Right, time to go. Everyone's joining us. Head tracking on. Right, we hold it on the brakes. 50%. Half side stick down. Oh yeah, we need to start the clock. 
Don't need to do that on the seven eights. But there we go. Starting the clock. Two clicks forward. Man, flex 60, SRS. All the trust is blue. Looking out down to the end, keeping it straight with the rudder. Ball traffic, American 450, taxiing to 17 via Alpha at the ball. There's 100 knots, stick to neutral. B1, rotate. Uh, jet star, tango landing at runway 110. Positive rate, right. gear up. Nav. We're demonstrating uh, aerospace for the landing up runway 110 and departing jet star traffic. And away we go. Just like that. And you can look at the view, look at the mountains. Ugh, oh, what a place to go flying. What a day to go flying as well. It is a bit unusual having to look down here when uh, these days I look straight out the front and the HUD. It's quite a nice thing to have. Right, thrust levers have come back a notch. That's thrust climb, climb, all the thrusts. Accelerating now. Did I say positive rate or positive climb? I tried to think. <laughs> and we'll put it in the autopilot. Just on five to uh, Tango holding for separation. Uh, very organised. This, this is good stuff. I like it. Um, right, bud the S. Flaps going to zero. This arm, the speed brakes. Get rid of the nose lights. I remember that bit. That's good stuff. Happy about that. Getting up to flight level, so we're going to set standards. I can't wait for. The, I hope we get an EFIS unit to add on. That'd be great. EFIS is one. This is one of the most used panels on the airplane. Usually, the um, all the paints missing off these on the older Airbuses. Fifty-three minutes after stream start. Good job. Thanks, right? Yeah, if we did well there. <laughs> it's usually on airplanes. I have less to say. Um, what holds me up on the 787 these days is I've got so much to say about it. <laughs> you just talk all day. Laura Mee says, it's summer down in Chile. It ought to be a lovely day. 16F feels like 1F in Boston today. Oh, I bet it is cold. That, yeah, I know the Northeast America is very cold right now. Look at that view. Unbelievable. What settings do you have for the eye tracker? I will have a look. Um, I might make a video on that. I had a lot of questions about that after my last video. In my last video, I talk about... Um, I'm going to talk about the... Um, in my last video, I talked about using the HUD and head tracking in the 787, um, which some of you might find interesting. Right, let's see, let's do the Lexus the approach, yeah. No no checklist to do here, which is very Airbus. You don't have anything to do here. Gear is up, lights are out, that's all you need. I'm out underway. <laughs> Isaac Johnson said, Hey Cap. Finally got to watch, catch a stream from you. Been watching your videos since I started simming. Been really helpful for the 320 and not the 787. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Which is, uh, yeah, and then it should be fair enough. You're totally allowed to think that. But Isaac also said, sorry, I meant also the 787. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks, Isaac. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming along. Leah asks, how's the first officer doing? First officer is fine. Uh, she's not here today, as usual. She's, she's, I think she's forgotten about the uh, helping out. So uh, it's 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 just me again today. How was the eye tracking and head tracking for takeoff? It's definitely great for taxiing. I love the head tracking. Is the eye tracking good? Was it relevant or did it look like it was looking above? Uh, I know sometimes I have to recalibrate it a bit. Anyway, there we go. 11,000 feet. That's done. Cruising at 390 as per the flight plan. So in it goes. What am I doing? I've got it over here. Oh, using the mouse. Unbelievable. 390. Through 10. 
nice and smooth. Super signs off. I was looking for a rotary dial like on the Boeing. It's incredible. It's really blowing my mind. The things I'm, the little things I'm trying to do wrong. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we accelerate, and away we go. D Ranger says, I believe Mini Ethis is next in place. That would be great. It's a lovely 1C in Canada, says Trouble Demon. Very nice. The dreaded flickering. Yeah, this, this shadows. Now, to me, some of these shadows have changed. Like, I've got this sort of grill effect here, which is presumably... What's that coming from? Why is it a grill? Where's the sun? Not sure. It looks good. Like, I like the, the detail in the shadows, but there, yeah, this flickering grainy thing is, is a little bit unpleasant. But this stuff is a bit better. Hopefully that smooths that out. Lucas says, how are you finding the 787 in real life? My dad has kept something. I love it. I think it's great. Beautiful scenery, it certainly is. Look at that. Still a bit of a headwind. We always have headwinds. <laughs> That's the law on my streams. What's the key to the colours on the terrain display? So, um, blue is obviously water. Boeing don't bother with that. You don't get that shown. Uh, black is just sort of sea level ground or whatever that's irrelevant then you've got different shades of green and what these numbers here are are the altitudes sea level of those different shades so that's this is showing terrain from 4,000 feet to 8,100 feet in green um, there is other terrain and these dark these black bits but it's just below that 4,000 so it's not showing them so these two numbers that's the two different uh, amounts it's showing you Turtle Kayak says, eye tracking was pretty neat to see what you looked at. Okay, good. Glad you liked it. I imagine the Hevo would help with the speaker words. Yeah, I wish you would. <laughs> uh, we have flown to Finland. Yeah, we have. Flex 60 plus 390. How light are we? We're pretty light. I mean, because we don't have much fuel. 67 tons. So it's not the heaviest ever. And they're just good conditions. It's not very hot. Uh, it is a good point. Max 3.9 series a little bit. For a Neo, that even that's tight. It's a good point. Let's go to 3.7 to start with and then see how it's doing. But the 20 is not too bad. 21 Neo is worse. It would be a little bit more limited. Lauren B says, first officer has, has gotten used to, ta to taking the first rest in three crew operation. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Off they go. I think the first officer is taking all three rests, actually. Uh, I have not. I have used Track IR a long time in the past. I've not used it recently. I've never had it myself. Um, but I really like the Toby. I, I personally do. I know I've had sponsored videos as well, but my own opinion on it is that I, I actually, I really like it. I don't have to wear anything. It's. It, I don't even have to set anything up. It just is plugged in and it's just on all the time and it just works. And it even logs me into the computer with Windows Hello. It's quite nice. Yeah, this game, it does. This game has amazing views. It, there's no, no way around that. The terrain system I'm using here, it's a database on the real aircraft. It's not a radar. It updates like a radar with this sweeping, but it's not. Um, but it's a database. It's just downloaded onto airplanes. Chris says, unfortunately, I have to go to work and put some fires. Put out some fires. Uh, can't, sorry, I can't join. Uh, bummed out. I can't join for the rest of the flight. Have a fantastic flight. I'll be watching from work. I hope we don't distract you too much, Chris. But thank you for coming along. And uh, we'll see you next time. I hope it's not too stressful at work for you. Lucas says, off topic, if I'm not completely misremembering, you were also following Formula One, weren't you? Just came to my mind of the new season starting in March. Indeed, yes, I will be... I'll be watching Mercedes. <laughs> I, I won't even care about their testing, frankly. Let's see how their um, Bahrain qualifying goes. It's going to be the real tone for the season. But, uh, yeah, I will be keeping an eye on it. 
I don't think the optimum max flight levels are modeled on the fly by wire, uh, uh, says Stephen. Uh, they always seem to be the same, whatever the conditions. Okay, fair. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't ever show optimum the same as the recommended max. It could be close, but not usually the same. The Neos ask for higher optimums than the CEOs, the older engines. I know that. Airbus seems to think they've improved the handling of the airplane, even without changing the wing, really. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, I would suspect 370 would be typical. The 787 is amazing. The 787, we take off, even at max takeoff weight, you can go up straight to sort of 35, 360 often. It's a very capable wing. It's a big wing. I mean, it's the same size as the 777 wing, and the airplane obviously does not weigh as much as the 777. Um, so, it's, uh, it's also very fast. It's, it's excellent really gives us a lot of options and helps us get that higher level before other traffic does chaos says would you consider streaming in low latency mode in the future normal latency isn't designed for interactive streams for 25 seconds yeah i would do maybe i will uh we've we've changed it around we we had trouble with streaming in low latency i believe Um, so that's why we ended up on normal. I think it was the quality or the bit rate or something. Um, but maybe it's worth swapping back. I don't use for flight with Microsoft Flight Simulator. No, I've not tried it. In the UK, Sky Demon is what most people use, not for flight. I don't know if it's most people actually, but I, everyone I know uses um, Sky Demon. I don't know the reason for that. I don't do much GA, but uh, yeah. Love Out Loud has a big question. What are the different navigation types? VOR, NDB, checkpoint, etc. What are the differences and how do you use each one? Uh, that's a big topic. It's a good question. Uh, VORs and NDBs are both radio nav aids that transmit a signal. So they're on the ground, they transmit a signal, and then we can either we can point our needles at them uh, and if you want to know more about needle pointing and tracking needles towards these navigation aids, then uh, I have a video how to track needles. So do watch that and I'll just talk you through it. But the needle basically points at it. So um, the white needle here will be pointing at the VOR Tango Echo November. It's 18 miles in front and you can actually see it on the map. There it is, Tango Echo November. If I just turn down the background. There we go. Uh, yeah, Tango Echo November is in front of us and a VOR with a DME gives us the distance as well. But this is all being broadcast by this nav aid. Um, other waypoints, like Kamek there, is just an RNAV waypoint. The airplane knows where it is, and it knows the coordinates of where it is. So it also knows the coordinates of where Kamek is. So it can draw it on the map, and it can fly towards it, because it knows where on the planet it is. It does that using the gyroscopes in that IRS we saw up there, and also uses GPS when available. Uh, we're in GPS primary right now, so it's using the GPS. Um, but yeah, it's a that's the big difference. NDBs are like VORs, but they're not as accurate. They're very rare these days. I wouldn't worry about them. You're not really going to see any NDB approaches. The 787, some, some, some 787s don't even have NDBs fitted. You can't even tune an NDB on the 787. They, they got rid of it. It's just, it's just not considered worth it. <laughs> Dougal, hello to you. Thanks for joining us. No problem at all being late. It's great to have you here. Um, so yeah, big topic, a whole video certainly on its own, um, but that's a rough difference between the ones you listed anyway. <laughs> uh, Andy H132 says, I really hope the error package works this year for Mercedes and my team McLaren. In an ideal world, Lando would be up for world champion. Yeah, McLaren did well in the end last year after what was not a great start, was it? So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, we'll see. Mercedes gave up on their podless strategy. Let's wait for Q3 in Bahrain to see how things look this time. Not a Mercedes fan, but I'd love them to be more competitive again to make it more interesting. Indeed, who'd have thought we'd be saying that? <laughs> but there we go. Atul says, there is Wi-Fi on some planes. Can you use your device? Well, a lot of airlines won't approve Wi-Fi in the flight deck, but some will. It depends if your airline approves it or not. As ever with aviation, everything has to be tested and certified and approved. Lazarus says, I wonder if Airbus has a replacement plan for the 320 Neo or even started working on a new airframe. I'd be surprised. I mean, 
with the Neo, they've got... Oh, we ran out of data. Look at that. <laughs> um, or maybe they just don't cover that bit. Uh, yeah, with the Neo, they've got um, class leading fuel efficiency. I mean, I'd be really surprised to see them change it uh, anytime soon, frankly. It's short haul, so changing the wing design and so on can only make so much difference. Long haul aircrafts, like the 787, you know, it, it's a long time in the cruise, so you can get big fuel gains with these tweaks in efficiency. Short haul, you know, the shark clips are the big thing, but changing the wing now there's only a limit to what they can do with it and it's quite a good wing to start with but who knows i'm sure they're thinking about it <laughs> luke says i'm in the fly by wire a320 latest version and it still has an op um below terrain on navigation display so that's because you need to install the fly by wire sim bridge you need sim bridge for the terrain to work which i didn't know until a while ago Kodama says, how long are your type ratings valid for? Like, could you jump back in the A320 tomorrow or would you have to go through the whole process again? A good question. Um, they're valid for until they expire. Mine has now expired, so I can't now fly an A320. Um, as to what training I would need to fly it again if I wanted to tomorrow, whether it would be a short or long course, I don't know. That's a good question. It's very possible I'd have to do the whole course. Atul says, if the ADs fail, does the airplane remain in normal or not if they all fail? Sean says, can you program the VNAV to descend on its own at top of descent, or do we always have to select manage descent? You have to select it. It won't do it on its own. The Boeing will. This won't. Let's put it in nav mode. Put the tea kester below. There's the traffic behind us. Excellent. <laughs> We're going pretty fast, climbing at seven eight. So hopefully we'll uh, stay in front, unless there's a Vulcan flying out there. Simon says, "Quick up one side track again." Have you ever tried Fantasy F one? No, I have not. I would not be very good at it. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't fully understand fantasy sports. That's also says, considering four sectors a day, 365 days, large number of planes, it would still be a big saving in fuel, right? Sure. So you know, the reason airplane airlines are spending hundreds of millions on 320 Neos when they already have the old version is maintenance costs and obviously wear and tear, things need replacing, and airframes have a life. Um, but also, you, you even if you get 10% fuel burn saving on a flight, uh, it's worth doing, right? Because as you say, all day, every day, lots of sectors, it adds up. Um, what I mean is, where is that saving coming from? So on the 787, a lot of the savings comes from its cruise profile. It's got a wing designed for a nice long high altitude cruise, long haul cruise. Um, it, as a result, it doesn't have big flaps. Uh, it has very small flaps and then it has quite fast approach speeds. But that means it's lighter and it means in the cruise it's burning less fuel because it doesn't have all the, the parts of bigger flaps. 320, uh, you want to be able to land nice and slow so it can fit into smaller airports and you don't wear out the brakes because you're doing lots and lots of landings. So it wouldn't make sense to get smaller flaps and have a lighter cruise just to then have more wear on the brakes. 787, it doesn't matter as much. doesn't do many landings. You know, so it, this is the difference. And the wing, a wing changer of a whole airplane redesign on short haul is... You know, you've got to think where are the savings coming from. And obviously, changing the engines and putting shark on were two really, really big things. And Airbus also lowered the speeds. But I have my own feelings on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the fly -by development version, Patrick. And um, yeah, no top descent, no fixed rings. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what I have here. I was a little surprised. I thought Final App worked at one point. But obviously, no, no more. Last thousand feet to go now. Hayden asks, have you announced what you'll be doing for the 80k substream? I have not yet. Uh, I have a plan for next week. Uh, I'm getting, making sure I've got the right time off to do it, but I have not yet announced anything. Oh, 
Ah, so fixed rings do work. Yes, good, good. Because they did work, so... Let's pick a waypoint. Wow, this is a very direct route. Tigno. There they are. Yep, that works. There's Mac and out. We've got the TCAS on below. Let's just go through the systems. Engine's looking good. Way too much oil. You never have that many. That's a, a silly number. It should be like 18 at most. And then by now, it'd be much lower, of course, in the cruise. Uh, all good. All good. No great surprises. That's good. That's correct. Gear up. That's lower. All things you just don't see on the 7.8. <laughs> Surprised it's pumping in 34 degree air. I don't think it would need that, but there we go. Good. Lovely. So we're making good progress, actually. Progress page. Does this show a landing time? No. Flight plan does. There we go. Uh, 1935. So an hour and 20. Not bad. 4.2 tons on arrival, which is pretty good going. Means we've got an extra 49 minutes. Ah, oh, this is nice. Boeing doesn't do such good fuel management, I don't think, in terms of displaying it to us. Oh, I don't like it as much. I shouldn't say it's not as good. I just don't like it as much. This is quite clear. Just enjoy the views for a bit. Look at that. Incredible. Aimbot says, do you plan on more 787 tutorials? I do. They are. I was working on one just yesterday and it didn't didn't work out, but I will get back on that this week. So I'm hoping to get one ready for you soon. Sorry, I was uh, trying to sort out things around my uh, my desk here. Look at the look at that. Oh. Chile is the most amazing country. Absolutely beautiful. Miles says I actually called live. Welcome Miles, thanks for coming along. Robert says, have you found yourself saying in the Airbus when you're driving the 787? I'm, I have uh, when using vertical modes. The, the thing I do prefer, hands down, I, I, love, I love both, but I love the Airbus and the vertical modes on the Airbus are super. Open climb, open descent and the ergonomics of the way it's designed is really, really straightforward. You just pull or push and it's done. When I'm in the Boeing and I'm trying to use VNF path, VNF out, VNF speed, flitch, vertical speed, and I will talk about these in my next video. Um, I uh, I often think back to the Airbus. <laughs> uh, I try not to say it though, uh, as you can imagine, people don't really uh, don't really want to hear it. <laughs> How many hours in the air do you have? Um, several thousands, more than five thousand, less than ten thousand. Isaac says, which 787 do you think is the most accurate in Microsoft Flight Simulator? In terms of operating them, they're all really good. Uh, I, I need to try out the new Horizon. I know they've changed the rotation law, or not the law, but the way it rotates on takeoff. So that will be good to try. Um, but I think I, I've, I'm going to do a review of the Kuo as well, which I've been using, and that's very nice as well. So they're all, they're all similar because, of course, to operate, they've all got that working title avionics, and it's so good. Uh, I, I'm still blown away by what they provide in a default, as it were, aeroplane. USA says, now you're flying the 787, do you see yourself retiring back to the 320 years later? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I suspect I'll fly the, uh, the 320 again. I, I really do. I hope so. Lauren Reese says, push it, pull it, bop it. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> it's great. Uh, 
Pet Boy says, I wish we had a modern Airbus long hauler in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Can't wait for the any A350 or fly by wire A380. Me too. I'm looking forward to both of those a lot. Um, and we're getting. Where's the Aerosoft A330? Envy and Ewok says, How does it feel to be back in the virtual 320 cockpit after having gone to the 787? An old friend or some nostalgia? Indeed, it is, yeah. It's funny as well because when you change aeroplane you you pick up on the things you don't like right so uh in the 787 things that I, I found easier in the airbus or i liked more in the airbus you notice them so when you're flying the 787 and i'm like i say the vertical modes are something i don't particularly like or care for i think the design was better on the airbus uh it comes up a lot so you end up thinking that your your previous airplane was great and i i've been doing that a lot thinking oh the airbus was was so good and it's quite fun to come back into the Airbus and use, I think particularly this, the FMGC or the McDo, and I had to think about that there, <laughs> um, and see some of the things I like. Now, now I'm using the Airbus again. I can think to the Boeing and think of some of the things I actually prefer on the Boeing. Um, certainly, the, some of the stuff on the ground and some of the flows and the, the way we don't have to test the engines, the fires, and things like that. Now, that is natural, and it's also the reason I wanted to fly the Boeing. A lot of people said, why don't you fly the 350? You know, uh, surely that's the most, makes the most sense. But I wanted to fly the Boeing, so I've done both, and I can compare, and then, you you know, it's a whole world of aviation, and the idea of not flying a Boeing and an Airbus when you have the opportunity. I mean, why wouldn't you fly both? So, yeah, I uh, I like it. I like the fact that I can... I can genuinely compare what I like about them. And I, I you know, I think they're both fantastic. But uh yeah. I'm enjoying being back in the Airbus a lot. <laughs> I love this this FCU being so small compared to the size of the MCP on the A uh seven eight seven. All the buttons, all the modes. I just can't believe how well designed this little unit is. It's absolute genius this. I'd love to meet the meet the person who developed it or, or came up with that that the ethos behind it. It's, it's great. Can't overstate that. Will you leave the seven eight seven for another Airbus long hauler? It's possible. Anything's possible. I, I remember. I, I don't have as much say over what airplane I fly as you know I would like. I'd love to be able to say, well, I want to fly this now and go and do that. It, it doesn't tend to work like that. So I could find myself doing any number of things <laughs> before I know it without really choosing to. So with regards to the Aerosoft 330, Chaos says, isn't that the million dollar question? I asked, where is it? <laughs> Atto said uh, that they've just opened a new final assembly line at Boeing. Very cool. Go and see it. That boy says it's like a meme now. Oh dear. Captain Wazza, good to see you. Captain Wazza says, yeah, I'd love more Airbuses. Get my money's worth out of the TCA packs. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> Will you go and fly the old Q400-8? No, Sven. I, I highly doubt that. There's just not many of those around. Um, it's possible, though. It is possible. But they're, they're, not, they're, they're a rare thing these days in, in Europe. Oh, no. That's a shame. I wanted the views. Well, hey, it's back. <laughs> okay, good. Boeing 787 is queen of the skies. Let's get to yeah, I'd agree with that. Excellent. USA Flyer says, I want to try a 15-hour long haul sometimes and go to bed and land in the morning. Yeah, well, we did a 15-hour, we did a 12-hour flight, but I think it was a 15-hour stream. Or maybe it wasn't quite that long, but we did a, we did a full-length live once, twice, actually. Um, but it's, it's tough. <laughs> So 
So, as far as I can tell, no news on Aerostar 330. Uh, well, someone's caught me here. Basically, he wants to fly the 757, but couldn't. Yep, it's a mango. I've, I feel like the 787 is as close as I could have gotten. It's the same modes. It's not brown, but it's smaller than the 777, so it's pretty close. And the 73, I don't think... Maybe the 73 Max is the closest thing to the 75, but... I feel like with the way the overhead panel's set up on the 78, it's as close to the 75 as I'm going to get. I can't wait to fly the 75 in Microsoft Flight Sim and compare it. Um, so, let's see. Apart from the weather, what other differences are from flying in the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere i think that is from justin uh that's about it there's not a lot you, you don't have to do anything clever with your navigation systems it's much harder to fly near the north magnetic pole or to go above the arctic circle um, than it is to start flying around um down in the southern hemisphere you just carry on like normal north is still north south is still south and it's just you cross the equator when you cross the equator you will deal with thunderstorms that you've never seen um but aside from that <laughs> There are big, big thunderstorms around the equator all year long. Luke is asking about my specs. My specs are relatively old now. i7 10700K. Still a good graphics card though. RTX 3080. The 32 gigabytes of RAM. Which I do need, I think. Actually, I was going to do that. Let's see. I'm curious what my RAM usage is at the moment. This is not interesting streaming. <laughs> Well, that's ridiculous. My current RAM use is 31.3 gigabytes out of 31.9. That's ridiculous. Dedicated GPU usage is it's full, obviously. It's using 10 gigabytes with a little bit of shared. But my RAM is at 31, is at 99%. I mean, and obviously that's all Flight Simulator. Flight Simulator is using 22 gigabytes of RAM. ridiculous <laughs> Dougal says no way the sim should be using all the RAM it does sound abnormal and this is going to explain what happens what's happened to us when things have gone there severely wrong on stream maybe it's pre-caching Infinity Watch says isn't it better to use all available RAM maybe it is maybe it's just doing it on purpose maybe it's designed to I'm not having any performance issues from it we did though remember I streamed a little while back now people I know that um, EasyJet Simpilot had a video out about fixing that stuttering but um, I cleared out the cache and have let it redo it um, and that seems so far to have helped I've also cleared out some old files and I installed a few things and made some space on my hard drive and that's all seems to have helped it so far because yeah we had some bad lag I don't think I didn't go into the NVIDIA control panel and start fiddling with any of that I didn't think it was necessary and it turns out it wasn't so far touch wood um, I think it was just, uh, I just cleared out the cache in Microsoft Flight Simulator as well as a few other things. AC445 says, I saw another computer recently using 99% of its RAM for nothing. I think it's something to do with Windows. Uh, Windows is fine. Yeah, it's okay when I'm not using Microsoft's uh, AC445. But thanks, thanks for the thought. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Microsoft Flight Simulator can free it up if other applications call for it. Yeah, there you go. So maybe that's what it does. I'm not using frame gen. I'm using a 32 inch monitor, Chris. 1440p. It does look cold down there in the D320 Superfan. Thanks so much for the tip, Flight uh, Flix. Really appreciate it. Flight Flix has tipped $10. Very kind of you. Thank you. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, really, really appreciate it. 
I haven't seen any messages from Flightfix, so if you um, are in the chat, let us know if there's anything you want to say. But yeah, really kind. Thank you. Thanks for supporting the channel. Gordon says, you need a relief pilot for the long haul videos. Yes, I do. I wonder if I could do that. That could be quite fun. Unlikely. Schedules are very difficult, but yeah. Ryan Y says, is your airline getting the 777X and is that of interest to you? Um, this has gone to default, hasn't it? We've lost connection. Ugh, that's not good. Uh, am I interested in the 777X and is my airline getting it? I won't say if my airline's getting it. Am I interested in the 777X? I. Right, it's interesting. It's a new airplane. It's interesting, naturally. Um, flight is the same as the 78. It just doesn't have the nice air. I, I like the air on the 787, the humid air and the big windows and the, the lower pressurization altitude. So it all comes down to that, really, if that's changed or not. I don't think it's changed much. AC4 for 5, talking about Q400s earlier, says, uh, come to Canada, we've got the half, half the world's population. Indeed, yes. Uh, Jacob Kemp, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. Really appreciate it. Jacob says, thanks so much for all the content. Your videos and streams really helped me to learn th uh, enough to fly airliners. Oh, that's him. Really appreciate all the content and glad you're streaming regularly again. Thanks so much, Jacob. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm really pleased to be getting the streams in uh, regularly again too now. It's been... Uh, we, we went a long time without them and I, I missed it a lot. So, yeah, really great. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and thank you for that very generous super chat. Really, very kind. So thank you again to Flightflix and thank you again to Jacob Kemp. Really, really kind of you both. Flightflix says, I'm too busy trying to remember how to fly the URD and the approach. Indeed, we'll talk about that in a moment. Should be good fun. It's going to take a bit of memory from me as well. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Jacob. Really appreciate the super chat. Very kind. <laughs> Savango says, Please, we already had the sim crash episode back on the A300. Indeed, we did. Now, I'm hoping we, we won't have a repeat of that. This doesn't look right, does it? This is just generic elevation data. This is a great looking airplane. I mean, really, look at this. Look at the cockpit texturing. The sounds, the texturing, they're just, just brilliant. No, that's no good down there, is it? The plane does not give a top descent on its own at the moment, I believe. What is your favourite add-on to Microsoft Flight Simulator, including things like GSX? That's a great question. <sighs> Honestly, the thing I use the most would be Flight Recorder which is how I do my replays. But I use that for the streams. Um, I don't tend to use the sim much outside of streams and videos. So I don't get to, I, I should use it a bit more. And I, I'm hoping I'll get the chance to actually enjoy the sim in, in other ways as well. I've recently bought the Heapler India Fox Echo F14. And I mean, that is just lovely, of course. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If you look at things I've actually used the most, it would be the Phoenix, it would be the fly-by-wire, uh, and now it would be the Horizon 787. You know, these are my most used add-ons, and I, I think they're Traffic. just brilliant. Traffic. Oh, no. Now, we have auto TCAS. There we go. TCAS is blue. A hundred above. I think someone might have slewed ahead of us there. It's quite a long way away. Yeah, they're eight miles away. Oh, but they are coming straight at us. There they are. Are we going to have to descend? <laughs> Struggling with the wind. Oh, gone.
Right. Dougal says, that heat player F14 is so nice, but I love the Vulcan too. Yes, the Vulcan is super. And I mean the Hawk, the Just Flight Hawk, that's excellent. Uh, the Just Flight F28, which seems to have been a little bit overlooked. It, it didn't get much attention. And I made a video on it, but it uh, it, it didn't, didn't take off like some. Like the 146 is also excellent. I would say the 146 is one of my favorites. The Hawk is one of my favorites. The Vulcan is... So the Just Flight lot have done some really excellent planes. Um... Yeah, the F-28 is lovely. I should definitely get that on stream again. I did like the PMDG DC-6. And I love the Indy Builds A310. I hope we get the Beluga. I really want that Beluga. <laughs> Why won't they give us the Beluga? Oh, it's coming in 2024, isn't it? The, the, that's presumably where that, that's gone. The Beluga XL. It was the Aliens. <laughs> there we go. Steven says, the fly-by-wire does calculate the top of descent in my experience. We waited a long time for VNAV, but it seems to work pretty well now. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll see what happens. Ryan uh, is asking, did you change airlines when you went Boeing? I'm saying, uh, so you've had to learn new SOPs, etc., along with the new aircraft. Uh, that is a question I won't answer. But I appreciate why you're asking, Ryan, and uh, I totally understand. But I, I just won't answer that one um, right now. What I'll say is that the SOPs that are the same th for, uh, across airlines, sorry, are the same between different fleets in an airline, are relatively small. There's not actually that many of them. The SOPs for flying the airplane are nearly always totally different. Um, that includes the call outs and everything and the way you load it up because they're just too different oh yeah everyone thinks top of descent will be calculated good stuff good stuff yeah chaos I agree Mike has done an amazing job on these textures it, just, it looks just gorgeous yeah range says if you toggle photogrammetry back on it'll take a couple of minutes oh i might be brave though so a330 driver is that 737ng driver um and what have they changed name or do they stick with the 737ng name <laughs> Lauren says, so on the 787, you're not supposed to put the arrival in whilst still on the ground, else it can cause the flight plan to sequence incorrectly. When is the right time? Sometimes the arrival is huge. Uh, it's basically once you're underway. You can just do it once you're getting away from your departure airport, uh, Lauren. Yeah, you don't you don't have to wait to even the top of uh, climb. But you've got to be out of that sort of departure area. Waypoint well, initiative predicted top of descent time. That's true. It will tell us, won't it? Oh, there's continuity. I will work that one out. Top of descent. There it is. 1912. 45 minutes to go. Do need to get briefing soon. He renamed. And did he rename the channel? Hayden says, if TKS failed in cruise, is it possible you could ram into another aircraft at the same flight level by catching up with them? No. Um, the reason for that, it's a good question, Hayden, is that as ever with aviation, there's there's several layers to it. So the TKS is the last layer. Um, the point being, if you're under radar control from air traffic control, then you will, uh, they won't let you get too close to an airplane. They won't even let you get anywhere near it. If you're not under radar control, let's say you're oceanic, then you will have been given an oceanic clearance. So oceanic air traffic control is it will be along the lines of you're allowed to enter the oceanic airspace at a certain time and they'll tell you a certain speed to fly so you won't catch up with another airplane so they don't rely on TCAS like that so even if it failed 
and you had no radar control as long as you keep doing what you're cleared to do then you'll stay separated until you get back into radar control on the other side of the ocean yeah so no trouble at all and these days oceanic control often means cpdlc so they can still message you and update you and you can tell them our tks has failed if you need to Uh, Lauren V, I need to look up exactly what it would do. Um, I believe it's to do with sequencing, i.e. you press the toga button and it would put itself into the go-around. Um, or if you did that again after takeoff, that's what I think would happen. Um, so I think what you said there is correct. So in my experience, everyone just does it later in the climb. Or even weren't doing the cruise. 77 NG driver did change the name of the channel. So A330. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I have had to take action based on a TCAS. Yeah, I've done that before. Um, MPD Box says, Now that you're on a long haul aircraft and cross the pond regularly, has the interest in Vatsim cross the pond vanished completely? <laughs> Well, I never did Vatsim cross the pond. I'd actually say I'm more interested now to compare it to how it is in the in, in real life. So maybe I'll keep an eye out. Maybe I'll actually try and get onto one of those and see if we can get it. I mean, I'd need CPDLC to be working, and I don't know how to use CPDLC in Flight Sim. That's something I might need to look up. I would need to look up. Hello, Eddie. I hope you're doing well. Um, so yes, the gadget budget, I have had a TCAS alert. I've only had one. I've you get TCAS, you get traffic, traffic, which is the the initial TCAS alert. Uh, that's not uncommon. You might hear one of those a month, maybe once every couple of months, hopefully less. If you get if you're hearing them a lot, it's probably you doing something wrong. <laughs> you shouldn't hear it very often. Um, and why, what I mean by that is you can get a traffic traffic alert from the TCAS where it warns you it's the stage before it gives you an actual instruction on what to do. So it just says traffic to get your attention. It can give you one of those. Even if you're obeying all your restrictions from a traffic control, it just means that you're pointing too close to another airplane. So if you're getting lots of those, you're probably not shallowing out your climbs or descents properly. Uh, does oceanic clearance also apply if you go from Europe to South America, like Brazil? It does, provided you're going through the right airspace. So some airspace counts as oceanic and some just doesn't. Some is, is controlled or got VHF radios and things. They put them on little islands and stuff like that. So it does depend a bit. I need a hoppy account. Yeah, I did try that once. I, I failed, but I will try again. Does the 787 work with hoppy at all? Mars is saying, have you had an add-on really disappoint? Um, I'm trying to think. I haven't... I don't tend to... I don't cover things... Uh... I definitely have what they are I don't know at the moment <laughs> um, I wouldn't I wouldn't have covered them on the channel if I didn't really like them is usually the, is usually the case ah the CTP America's Planning Committee, Lauren V. Very good. Wow. I look forward to... Uh, well, you can help us. <laughs> Ryan says, are you enjoying long haul? Maybe cargo would be interesting. I am enjoying long haul. Cargo. Yeah, I suppose cargo long haul. It's all night flying anyway, so... Long haul just has its different challenges. We've talked about in the past, but yeah, it's, it is it is tiring. There's no way around that. No way around it. Airline files the flight plans in real life, Cube. Yeah, you don't have to do that in airline flying. Lauren Reese says, Miami Oceanic, 
being one that uses VFR and radar. Basically just an extension of Miami Center sectors. Soon San Juan will be the two. There you go. Yep, they're growing them out. Uh, if you can't access CPDLC, this is Laugh Out Loud Gaming. Uh, Laugh Out Gaming. Uh, on the Boeing 787, you can use Easy CPDLC. It's an application that acts like CPDLC. Oh, there we go. Because, yeah, CPDLC is now a requirement flying over the North Atlantic, so... So nice not to have to update the heading bug as well. Right. Oh, here's the first officer. Hello. Welcome. Can you join us? Not much to do right now. Just probably why you're here. You gonna say hello? Silence. Hello. Nothing. <laughs> she never, ever, ever talks into the microphone. Whatever I do. You gonna say hello? <laughs> no, it just doesn't do it. She knows I want her to speak into the microphone, and that hence the absolute refusal. Just a grumble. Try once more. Come on. Can you? Come on. Can you say hello? Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello? No. <laughs> Just a blank stare. Um, yeah. <laughs> what about the A380, says McKellar B? Uh, would you like to fly it? Or do you prefer the 787-777-350? I'd, I'd like to fly the A380. Definitely. Definitely. I'd li I, would, uh, I, would, I would definitely like to do that. Laugh out, uh, uh, Laugh out Gaming says, when you use lock versus when do you, you use lock versus approach mode? Do you ever use both ILS? No, you have to. If you're doing a full ILS, you'd use approach. If you're just flying a localizer approach, you you'd use localizer. That's the only reason to do it. You can see the FO in the flyby aircraft. It's a setting. Ah, yes. Oh, I won't mess with it too much now, but yeah. <laughs> I never do fly with an FO if it's an option. Aiden J. Robbins, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Hayden says, thanks uh, for the awesome stream as ever, Cap. You're very welcome, Hayden. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for supporting us. Really appreciate it. Great to have you here. And supporting the channel as usual. Really, really very kind of you. Ooh. Bit of turbulence here. Ah, no, we're not in cruise, are we? So there's no such thing as cruise. There you go. Out cruise. Now the airplane in out cruise will hold the thrust setting and allow itself to wander in speed and altitude by a little amount. But I actually don't like this feature that much. It's supposed to save fuel by preventing it, the engines from constantly adjusting. But uh, what we're doing, what you find is sometimes the speed creeps up, the altitude creeps up, and it can get quite close to the red pole. So if there's any turbulence, you can then end up in the red bar. The Boeing 787 is better at this it just continuously very very smoothly adjusts the thrust for the speed which is the way i like it and we've triggered uh, v1's voice there we go <laughs> thank you again hayden for the super chat really appreciate it tobango says does she miss you a lot now that you fly long haul i think yeah i think a bit i think she's a little bit more lonely now it's a bit of a shame but she has someone come to check on her Lauren V may soon be on the way to being a real controller. Good luck, Lauren V. I hope so. That'd be fantastic. Infian says, uh, speaking of different airplanes, would you ever move across the pond to a US airline to fly the Queen? Yes. Expedite is rarely used. I have a video on the Expedite button. Uh, laugh out gaming. So yeah, have a look at my search for 320 Pilot Expedite. KS says, we can't wait to fill out all the CBs that now model with function. Are they really? Are these going to be modeled, are they? That would be quite something. Do you think AI will make it into airplanes one day? I can think of it changing the op 
optimum flight level automatically or turning your fasten seatbelts. Yeah, I mean, one day it's possible, isn't it? I think you have to be very careful because the whole point of aviation is certainty or as much certainty as we can get. We don't like to think, well, this switch may work. We need it to know it will work. And the problem with AI is if it's thinking on its own, what's it thinking and how does it adapt and change over time? You're not allowed to change things in aviation very easily. So I think it's a long way off, a long, long, long way off. Right, let's try and get this to work. Stand by. Right, we're loading in, loading in all the data. Isn't an autopilot AI? No, autopilot's not. I would, I don't think it would count as AI. It doesn't make any decisions. It just, it doesn't grow in any way. I think AI is overused as a, as a name, but um, I suppose you could argue maybe it is. It's reacting to the world around it, but yeah. Hey, there we go. That's better. Uh, when do you plan the descent? I should be planning it now. The first officer has arrived just to distract me. She's staring at me. Anyone who doesn't know, first officer is my cat. <laughs> She comes along. She used to sit on my lap for all the streams. She quite likes it when I'm on the simulator because it's she usually a couple of hours of still a still lap to stay on. But these days, I don't know. She's less less likely to, especially in winter with the heating. And I think she's going to sit on the radiator. So she's distracting me now. Hello, <laughs> rolling around. Um, good. Let's let's set up. So here's our arrival via Bodom. Because you can see our little top descent area just after Bodom, which makes sense. Um, so let's get this sorted. So, preparing for the descent. I remember this little hat we have to do. So flight plan, first of all. Arrival. Uh, let's check the weather. STNT. Do, do, do. Puerto Natales in Patagonia. Beautiful part of the world. 31018. Wow, that's not too bad. But it is very much westerly then. So landing it onto. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good actually. So, bone to Alpha via. Oh, yeah, it's not a great arrival, is it? it stops at Mudas. <laughs> um, and then we do the VOR to 28. So that's all correct. Bowden, Nepal, down to Mudas. Then Nadax to Tekis. No, I think we would stop at Mudas. And then let's just get the VOR for 2.8. Because, Jeff, yeah, we can't do final lap. So we could do the RMP with El Nav only minima. But we'll do the VOR. All right, there's the TKS alert again. And it's gone. Uh, yeah, so actually, we'll get rid of that. Ah, it's going to go by Nedex. Oh, so we do need Nedex. Okay, fine. Because uh, level, uh, do we need it? Well, we'll go by Nedex. So that's fine. We'll just sequence that when we get there. Um, so yeah, that is pretty reasonable. Let's just check on the plan page. It looks sensible. Do, do, do. Scroll, scroll, scroll. There it is, Mudas. And then we take a radar vector or something outbound to Nedax. And then back in for the arrival. Pin. Maybe she wants to take this landing to the Maybe she does, indeed. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so... There it is. Rudas out to Nedex. I think that'll work. It's going to have to work. That's what we've got. Sorry, I'm talking to my cat now. <laughs> uh, and there's the arrival. So let's check this. Uh, we're going to fly this. I think we just fly it properly raw data. It's quite an interesting one because the VOR is not on the airfield. It's nowhere near it, in fact. So after Nedex, we then get to 11 miles out, the 136 kilo. We'll be there at 3,500 feet, 4,250, and then level off. And then we have CF28 at 7 miles. But remember, that you're not 7 miles from landing there. Uh, and we'll go down to 1,700 feet. Oh, it doesn't even give us a continuous descent. <laughs> That's brutal. That's uh, interesting. So, yeah, so 1,700 feet. That's a 3.7 miles. Sorry, we fly at 1,700 feet to the VOR. And then after the VOR, we descend on a 3 degrees um, down the rest of the slope. So it's not a long final approach, really. That's that's very short. Uh, Nedex is above 7,000. Yeah, it's a bit awkward, this. I think we'll just get to Nedex at 7,000. I think that's what we'll do. Let's go in there at 9,000. And it was planning to be... Yeah, it's planned it about to do that. So that's fine. That's pretty good V-naving, actually. See how that works out. Um, but yeah, so down to 700 feet. So slow down. I'll be here. We'll just fully configure the airplane. And then um, go to flat full, about half a mile, then 0.3 we will um, pull three degrees and start down. And then as we get one mile away from the VOR, <laughs> so it's going to be really weird, uh, we'll be at, let me write, let me write these down, because it's only three degrees. So uh, 1,700 at the VOR, which is a very low platform, but totally doable. Uh, then at one, we'll be at 1,400. And then at two miles, we'll be at 1,100. Three miles will be at 800. Four miles, which should be 500, and we should certainly be visible by then. Uh, I say visible, we should be visual by then. 740 minima, vis of 2.4 kilometers for Cat C. 787 is Cat D, but that doesn't fit into this airport. So uh, scattered 5,000 feet at the moment in good visibility, so no trouble there, which is good news. So, yeah, so. At 3.7, they've got the missed approach point, which is absolutely fine. It'll be about 740 feet. But they've actually leveled off. We'd be lower than that if we've continued down through the minima. Yeah, interesting. So they're actually offering you to fly level for a bit, but we won't do that. That's that's the unusual way of doing it in non-position. Uh, good. So it's going to be quite an interesting one. So we're going to be flying down. I'll be using my FCU, certainly. We'll get down to 3,500, track inbound. I'll be doing that with the VOR needle up, and I'm going to type in the course as well. So the flight plan's done. RadNav, I'm just going to tune the VOR. 115 decimal 9 in there. Hopefully it will wake up. And we have an inbound course, 316 all the way. 316. Uh, we can do the same on the other side. Let's hope it shows up early enough. 316. So it should identify on its own now. But we're a bit far out, obviously, for now. Uh, and then we can go to the VOR on here. And we'll just follow that by going to track FPA. And then we can fly that track once we're on it. 316. And once the crossbar aligns. Pretty straightforward, he says. Uh, and then we'll cross... Papa November Tango, descending at Papa November Tango, which is the VOR, three degrees, uh, and then disconnect flight directors off for the visual section. I'm excited, should be good. So that is the Radnav progress page. Let's put in the runway. And now this is very different coding compared to how we do it on the uh, Boeing. But this is going to be Sierra Charlie, number Tango, runway. Two, eight. I think this is better. The Boeing way, it doesn't work like that. It's a bit of a, a bit of a pain, really. I don't use it very often, in fact. 
Uh, do you know if there's any SOPs about the Airbus table tray? Ask USA Flyer. Yeah, you don't. The table tray needs to be stowed for landing and takeoff, basically. Yeah. You can have it out during the taxi and obviously out during the cruise. Most pilots will put it away as they sort of get onto the approach below 10,000 feet. Good stuff. Right. Uh, so that's that's distance to the actual runway. So we can keep a rough idea on our altitude. So remember, this airport is at... It looks like sea level to me. Uh, airport elevation, 200 feet. 200 feet. So, yeah, we need to make sure that uh, we are... Well, the red out should come alive at 2,700 feet for the red out. That will make sure our Q&H is right. Super important our Q&H is correct. If we get it wrong, uh, it can go really wrong because you'll actually... Uh, be at the wrong altitude and the airplane you'll think you're at the right altitude because of course you'd have um you you the altitude will tell you what you want to be at so you'll just fly to that altitude but then you'll find out you're actually closer to the ground than you thought so 1014 14 degrees wind 31018 minima 740 that's nice and straightforward. I love typing that in there. On the Boeing, you have to sort of wind it in, which is not so good. Uh, and this is certainly going to be a flat full landing because it's a very short runway. If we look at the ground chart, just 1,800 meters. So there is no excuse. This is a medium and max reverse. I'm just going to do the whole lot just in case it's slightly damp or slippery. And then once we're happy, it's decelerating. We can go to idle reverse because on a dry runway, it doesn't make much difference. And there we go. If we go around, it's an immediate and sharp climbing left turn into holding pattern at 3,500. So it'd be back to here to hold straight away. So flight plan radnav progress per fuel, 1.8 tons. We got an hour of extra fuel, so that's worked out nicely. Secondary, and that's done. That's set up. Brake medium, good. Back to the nav. Now, there is a simpler way to fly this approach, if the weather's good enough, which is we can just fly it visually. Once we're below 5,000 feet, we might get that opportunity. And then you don't have to bother with the whole FPA. Um, remember, we're going to have to check every altitude. So I've got to, at one mile from the VOR, check that I'm at 1,400 feet and adjust uh, and so on. You know, And then it's fiddly. It takes a lot of work. Why wouldn't you just fly visually if you can see out the window and align it with a three-degree approach? That's something pilots would do. Well, as long as we prepared for it, there's no reason not to. So what I am going to do to do that is go to the fixed info. We don't need uh, Tigno, but I can put the runway in. So let's put in um, SCNT runway 28. So that's the runway we're aiming for. And let's think of a plan for how we might visually fly this. That's a 3.7. That's distance from the VOR, confusingly. This is very topsy-turvy. Uh, is only 0.8 miles from the runway. That is the point where you, in theory, would then align yourself with the runway. So what I could do is put in a one mile ring there and then a radial. No, I'm not going to put radial in. Um, what I could do now... Well, I'm going to have the approach drawn on the nav display anyway because it's already in there. Let's just see what this looks like. We're just drawing a picture here. Now, this is something I've not done in the 787 yet, but I would love to because 787, you can actually just draw waypoints on. It's really quite good. As long as you know what you've drawn. Do, do, do. So if we were flying visually, what are we going to do? So we would come downwind. If we think we have the altitude off and we get down to 5,000 feet here, so I, there's a lot of terrain around, so we do need to be careful that we're following this correctly. Uh, we can get ourselves down into the bay and then we could turn in early, couldn't we? We don't have to fly around over here. There's no terrain over here. It's going out to 11 miles just to fly a more complex approach. So disconnect, flight directors off, and then we'll descend down to an altitude that we think is safe. Visually, we can say that that's pretty much down to uh, 1,000 feet above the ground here. But let's get ourselves down to 2,000 feet. Or no, let's make it simple. Let's go down to 1,700 feet at the VOR. So we're going to have the VOR tuned anyway. Um, it's here, Papa November Tango. So if we descend to 1700, make sure we get there at 1700, fully configure the airplane, and then we can just fly in from the VOR and then turn on final. 
we could just do this visually. I don't see why we need to make it more difficult than that. There's no reason to cut it in tighter. It just means we can skip out this procedural part. So that'd be the plan. If we get visual, judge the altitude, get ourselves to the Papanoma Tango. The key thing here would don't rush yourself in. That That is a lot of altitude to lose. You couldn't do it like that. We'd need to get here, 5,000 feet, get visual, descend lower, and then turn around in the bay. So we'll realistically, we'd have to go f past it and back in like that, something like that. I'm making this sound very complicated, but that would be a, a, yeah, a way to do visual. The trick is not rushing in and messing up your config. So we'll see, <laughs> see if I manage to do that. Sun's going down. Top descent about 90 miles away, looking good. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I, I can't think of any more rings worth drawing really. Got the one mile ring there, which is what we'd aim for from the VOR, and then intercept from there and just three degrees the whole time which we can do on the pfd easier in the seven eight with the hud but there we go uh next checklist would be the approach checklist so we don't have to do that yet got the minimums in which doesn't appear there which i was looking for there <laughs> you can see me hesitate as i do a boeing thing tobango says let's see if you can still butter your old friend yeah i'm not sure i highly doubt that <laughs> i can't butter the seven eight seven Oh, there we go. Good stuff. Koski says, Hello, Captain. Long-term follower here. Thanks for the videos. Just spent a few days in hospital after two surgeries. Sadly, the C-word arrived before Christmas. I've enjoyed listening and watching your streams. Really sorry to hear that, Koski. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's horrible news, of course. But hopefully you um, you are able to uh, to fight through that as best you can. And I uh, hope all, we said all the best for the future and that you get some um, get some good news soon. Uh, yeah, so I'm glad the streams uh, have been enjoyable for you and thanks for coming along uh, today and uh, and sharing with us and yeah, all the best. Really hope that works out as soon as it possibly can. A lot of energy needed uh, to do that, I'm sure. So yeah, I hope you have some people around you to help you with that. Kirti says, uh, if you need help with that visual landing, let me know. I'm <laughs> professional Cessna 172 VFR pilot. Thank you very much. Well, you can uh, you can keep a close eye and judge. Chaos says, "I hope with new FMS version two, we'll get the ability to create waypoints where fixed rings intersect the flight path." Ah, interesting. Yeah. So that's that's advanced uh, McDo usage. That is, I did do a video on waypoints and drawing things and, and waypoints in, but it's it's not something we did very often day to day flying the Airbus. Um, but yeah, what, so what you could do is draw a 3.7 mile ring around the point on the side of this VOR, put the three, well you could do that now, put a 316 line out and then follow that. But the reason I'm not bothering is because the green line's already going to be there. It could disappear underneath in sequence though, that is a worry. Let's, let's not risk that. But put it in a moment, Tango. 1159 4 mile ring Three one six radial 4 mile ring and now we can get to plan yeah see this sort of stuff I would struggle with in there well, I'd need uh, some careful thinking on the 7-8 but remember you just fly a lot less approaches so you just don't see this stuff as much there we go so now even if the whole flight plan sequences to the runway and drops everything else we have our aiming point so we'll follow that blue line and then intercept the runway there at, at that, that marker there just something to have and we know the speed and energy we're going to do it so that's what you need so yeah we're set up for the visual I'd say Like he says, I'm totally not managing this approach on my fly along. I'll still try regardless. So, well, all the best. And if you fly visually, then, you know, this is just about managing the energy. Good luck. <laughs> I am using the mini cockpit, Dave. Yeah. Uh, why do you say McDo like a McDonald's item now, McDo with the large fries, please? Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, that's a term that a lot of, a lot of pilots use that. McDo. It's a shortened name for MCDU. 
which stands for multifunction control display unit <laughs> I don't know computer uh, management computer display unit goodness me I don't know that anymore that has left my brain Love Fat Loud Gaming asks, when do you turn off flight directors? So that's a good question. So once I'm visual, if I'm flying visually, I'm going to turn off all the automatics and the flight directors because they'll just get in the way. It's actually harder to keep updating the flight director and flight guidance system than it is just to turn it all off and fly the airplane. Again, provided you have a plan um, and the other pilot knows what you're doing. Because I'm on my own here, it would be a complete nightmare trying to adjust this at the same time. Although easier with the mini FCU in front of me. I must remember that is available. Um... So I'm going to turn off the flight directors. Yeah, at that point, if we're flying the full VOR approach because we can't see the ground yet, then I will, once visual, below minimums, hopefully, or um, before minimums, once visual, I'll disconnect the pilot, flight directors off, and we'll already have the bird. Multifunction control display units is organ aviator. Thank you. Yes, very good. <laughs> that sounds about right. Multifunction control and display units. Yep. Uh, I will be using auto thrust to go. Yeah, Airbus is designed to fly with the auto thrust, so I'll just use it. How long until final approach? Well, I can tell you. 1937. So, tw 20 minutes probably. Not long. It goes quickly. Quickly enough. Descent in about 60 miles, not that long. I'm going to speed up a bit. Let's try out this FCU. Yes. Let's do 8 0. Slow, slow for us these days. <laughs> I want to get there before it gets dark. Thanks, Jinky. Enjoy. Um, on a Boeing aircraft, the autopilot doesn't it doesn't fully rely on the flight directors. I'm pretty sure you can fly around without the flight directors on. Uh, and you can do the same on this one. You see there, it's it's not the flight directors that are concerning. It's the, the flight mode enunciators that tell you what the airplane's actually doing. Uh, by the way, we won't be pushing the LS button today. I must remember that. 4.7. tons. We making fuel here yeah making a lot of fuel good i feel like this has gotten thinner as well it looks it looks quite thin to me but i'm not a good judge of that anymore It could be because the the 787 pillars are thick. <laughs> this pillar comes way back and so do these. They're thicker than this. But that looks very slender to me. I don't know. Sorry to hear that, Kotki. Yeah, that's not good. But hopefully, I say hopefully things can improve as quickly as possible. Um, definitely, definitely don't want to be there too long.
no i'm not using frame generation this is just uh stock stock settings all ultra glaciers look at that that's awesome That's awesome. What an amazing place. Glasses left, right and centre. There's two down there. So there is a big national park under us now. The Del Toro's National Park. I th actually, is it under us now? Or is it a bit further? It might be further away. Let me check the that um, scope. We are down here. Way down here. Oh no, we are, we are, yeah we we are very much. We're about to pass into the yeah Torres del Paine National Park. Awesome. I suspect we're going to go right over the Grey Lake Glacier. Keep says this is a very scenic flight. It is. I mean, this is about as scenic as it gets. Uh, honestly, this looks like a fantastic job flying airbuses up and down Chile. Look at this. Gorgeous. So this is a glacier national park, and you can see why. There are glaciers all around it. Oh, there we go. I was right. Chaos says that they have indeed thinned down this uh, centre pillar. <laughs> yeah. It makes the Airbus view look really good. Is it that thin? It could be. The seven eight windows, the seven eight seven windows are very very angled, so that they are really sort of proper swooshy. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> really tilted back, um, and they sit a long way in front of you, a long 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 way in front of you. You can't really reach the bottom of them, and they are beautiful, but they have thick pillars. You got pillars that come right into the flight deck here and here um the best thing is that you don't have this pillar i don't think the windows go as far back as on the a320 it probably comes about here but you just get one massive window here and it's also much lower it runs down way below you here so you get a ridiculously good view out of the 787 it's it's amazing you can see right down Grey Lake. This could be the Grey Lake glacier here. Or is that one over there? We are on Vatsim, uh, Jinky. We are on Vatsim. Kelby says, that's interesting how you pronounce in glasses uh, compared to a person from the States. Yeah, I won't do an American accent, but uh, I'm imagining... It would be in the States glaciers. From the outside it's it's actually thicker since it's still the old cockpit, I see. <laughs> I mean I think the outside looks right. I don't think it should be any thin thinner than that. I mean that already looks pretty good. But yeah, definitely it's definitely thinner on the interior one. <laughs> Oh, 
Right, I've sailed past my top of descent. So, let's put the first one in, 9,000. Sorry, one four. actually I can put 9,000 in. The airplane should obey, and this would be a good test of it. Check speed mode. Manage speed. Thrust idle open descent. Must do manage descent. A risk here. I wouldn't do this in real life. Any turbulence and it, will, it could potentially overspeed because it goes right up to the red bar. Glacier. Glacier. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 it. That's what they would say. I think that is the Grey Lake Glacier. I think. Oof. Hard to tell. It's a bit more snowed over than I was expecting. No, that's it. There it is. Yeah, look at that. And that's the bottom of the glacier. Very cool. Very cool, Bateman. That's the Grey Lake. And then this is a beach. And then there's a hotel here. And you can walk along the beach. And then a boat takes you up. And over here. And you can go and see the glass glacier. Look at it. Unbelievable. It looks like a poster for Flight Simulator. In this national park, you can also see wild flamingos. Which is pretty cool. Anyway, we are, of course, high. Not the highest, though, we've ever been. But we're pretty high. Right, let's procedurally pick an altitude to descend to. Instead of just making it up. Normally, air traffic control would just clear you. I'm going to put in three... I'm going to put in five because that's where we want to be visually. So five and we'll put in the Q&H as we get lower. Apple Plays asks, if the A32NX was payware, how much would you be the most you would pay for it? It's a great question. Um... I'd pay as much as any other add-on. It, it would need to have... Well, it has been out, doesn't it? We've got a descent mode. So, yeah. It would need to have Final App to be the full Airbus experience. Like, we should be able to fly an RNAV in Final App. Um, that's the only thing it's missing right now. And that's not a criticism at all. I know these things are much harder to code than we could ever imagine. But, um, yeah, that would be what it would need for me to be saying full fare. Um but, I mean, if you look at what you get with the texturing and the audio and the systems they've got, it's hard to complain. I suppose failures would be the other thing. It does have failures, but not all of them. Really diving to get that path. Yeah, it'll dive down, 2.7. And now you see it's run out of room. It's not going to make it. But it has an altitude in magenta of 9.0, even though I've put 5,000 in the window. So this is correct. I'm really impressed. I am really impressed. What it's doing is, and this is something the Boeing does not do, and I wish it did. I've put a lower altitude in the window of 5,000 feet. It's showing me that up here on the FCU. But we're not actually going to uh, initially level off at 5,000. What's going to happen is we're going to hit 9, and then we will actually have to level off at 9 for a little bit uh, because of this restriction here. So that's what the airplane's warning me. So being a little bit high won't be a problem here because it's actually going to reduce the time we're leveled off. If we were going to be above 9 passing this waypoint anyway, and it wasn't going to have to level off, because then it could go down to 5 once we're past that waypoint, then it wouldn't bother showing us this 9-0. Uh, that's why it's got out magenta. It would be out blue 5,000. Second flight plan and soft go around would be nice too. Indeed, Stephen. Yeah, that's true. Paul asks, how do you find the ATC difference between US and UK? I like both. Um, I'm more used to the UK. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I've had good experiences in the US so far. I'll say that. So I've enjoyed it. I find them really friendly and helpful. 
there is more of a sense in the US that the controller is uh, it's the controller playing chess with their own pieces <laughs> and you are there to do exactly what you're told the second they tell you and there's a little in some cases uh, even I've seen there's a little less consideration of what might help you as a pilot <laughs> that's not to say they're not there to help you or they're not doing it things safely um, but you know we've all seen the videos of controllers shouting at pilots and so on in America and that's that is a, a bit of a difference also the more conversational way they chat I actually really like that I think it gets a lot of information across quite quickly but it can can have issues obviously especially with people whose English isn't their first language I think it, it standard phraseology works particularly well when you're trying to mix um, a lot of different uh, cultures and languages together at once but yeah I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed flying in America and I've had a great experience with very nice controllers looking after me. <laughs> Infinite Ewoks says, not got a... Um, a landing clearance of someone on three North Korea final. I mean, or oh, line up and wait clearance of someone on three North Korea final. So something that happens in America is uh, they will clear you to land with airplanes on the runway in front of you all the time. That's something that's quite that does happen in Europe, but it's it's not all that common. It happens a lot in America. I really like this livery. Really nice. I know it's pretty much a Euro white livery as we would call it, just uh, the the basic white airplane, even white engines. But they did paint the tail. To me. That demands demands some level of uh, credit. <laughs> oh, unreal. Look at this simulator. Oh, what what a time to be flight simming. I think just not that long ago what we what we were trying to achieve, you know, the amount of add-ons you'd need in FSX and stuff to, to get it looking half decent. So now it says seven zero. I'm a little surprised. Anyway, we're absolutely no way going to fly that visual because we have just passed the VOR <laughs> sixteen thousand feet. These waypoints came about much quicker than I had expected. So the airport is actually down here somewhere. Looks back over our shoulder. The town should be down here somewhere. There it is. Right, let's get down. Let's go into open descent down to 5,000. In fact, we can get down to 3,500 now. Let's run the checklist. So, uh, Barrow F, we have not set that. On QNH1014. We're in thrust side open descent with the speed brakes out. And seat belts can go on. Well, we haven't got 10,000 feet, but we'll do that now. 10,000, get the landing lights on. So they're preparing. Minimums, 740, auto brake. Please be at medium still. It is, that's a good sign. And engine mode selector is normal. That's complete. Right, well, we're visual. Another way to do visual is you can use the automatics for a while, can't you? So if we don't want to fly all the way out to NetX above 7,000 and it's reverted to heading anyway, um, we are a little bit stuck because of the clouds, but I can see clearly on the left, so I'm going to bring it round into the left and we'll descend in this gap in the clouds. I don't see why not. And that will keep us in this area. Speed brake staying out. Let me just bring up the recorder.
Now, the speed brakes aren't so effective here. I mean, they should. I think we should be doing more than 2,800 feet, to be fair. They're not really deploying very much. Um, that is partly because it's a 320, and this does have the speed brakes only go to half deflection. Uh, so, yeah. It could be the reason. I'm going to do 250 below 10 just because we are getting into terrain areas here. Airport's over there. But we can see it. There's the beacon. The VOR is somewhere here. There's the terrain we've got to avoid. So I'm going to circle back around. I'm going to do a extended center line from... Let's do from the CF. Oh. Ah, uh, that won't work. Okay, we won't do that. I'll do a direct two later. 8,800. We're going to enter 3.5. We're visual now, so I'm going to put 1,700 feet in the window. Good stuff. Good stuff. Keeping the speed break out. Energy's back at 250. Let's bring ourselves left. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using the autopilot to ease up my workload so I can calculate the distances and speeds and so on myself. Uh, something I didn't do earlier, clearly. Uh, so PNT at 1,700. That's about uh, about 6,000 feet from here. 6, 12, 18. I need 18 miles for the PNT. So we're going to have to go uh, basically all over here and then right. And that should give us a chance to wash off enough energy to do that. We're just too high for a straight in from here. Ryan says, I feel like we're very high and fast. We are indeed high. We're not too fast. Again... Speed brakes on the 20 are a little bit frustrating. We could take out the autopilot and do it, but I'm using the autopilot to ease my workload a bit here. The only problem we're going to have now is we're going to be pointing at our colleagues who have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> who have all got themselves in better positions than me. <laughs> uh, so I might go behind our friend here. Because it's not really fair. Uh, there we go. Oh, I'm, I'm enjoying having an FCU. Why is it going right? Please go left. There we go. Oh, we're going to point right at them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to level off here. So push the level off. Speed VS0. Then I'm going to pull the speed and wind it back. And we're going to just, instead of... Um, Pointed down at our colleague, who I can now see in front of us. We don't want to point straight at them. They're a thousand feet below, so we're going to fly level, reduce our speed, and take the energy out by slowing down. There we go. Go to flaps one. Come back to S speeds. Flaps two. Come back to 180-ish. And now I'm going to go down in vertical speeds. And we'll turn back around the other way. I think we're in a good place now. And we get rid of the speed brakes. I'm going to do thrust up open descent. The speed brakes are in, so 180 flap 2, we should get a reasonable rate of descent, and that way it will just protect itself. 4,000 feet. Airfield is 12. It's almost 15 miles away. So actually, we're slightly below the profile now, so that's all looking good. 1,700 feet. There's my level off arrow, and that's about at the Papa November Tango, so that's where we want it. Looking good. Are we on Unicom? Let's do it, yeah. Point on the traffic. Aerosky 338. 15-mile final runway 28. That turned quicker than I thought it would. <laughs> Look at that. Excellent. 
where we are essentially flying the VOR. That was, you know, that's how you end up being rushed into an approach. I was too busy enjoying the scenery. So let's finesse this now. Let's pull the vertical speed. Just shadow it out a bit. And we'll come back to 160. Because we can't go below 1700 feet until the VOR. So you see how we've gone from high to low. That easy. Yep, yeah, about 200 feet up. That's what we expected. So 1,000 meters to lose by Papa Member Tango. I'm just going to manage the speed. There's no point holding 160. Right, what did I forget to do? You don't have to do in a Boeing. <laughs> right, there we go. Manage the speed. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I can't believe that. <laughs> Didn't even cross my mind we need to activate the approach. Good. So we are now essentially tracking the VOR, even though we're not. We're just doing it visually. You can see here, there's the course bar. All I need to do is not point too much at this hill. So I'm just going to manage that. Uh, and let's just sequence the flight. So let's put the Papa Mimam Tango as the two way points. And then I'm going to pull heading to force it out of nav mode. There we go. So yeah, we could fly the VOR with heading and track and so on, but I just don't think it's worth it. It seems silly when you've got such a nice view out the window. I'll regret that in a minute. I'm quite enjoying using the FCU today as well. Still eight miles from landing. Still heading towards that VOR. Strong winds from the left. The replay software is recording. Well, this won't be continuous. We'll have a nice little cruise at 1,700 feet. Which is where it should be. I believe the platform was 1,700. Yes, it was. There we go. That's where we are. Hello. Come to help. Thank you. Is that star? Hello. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah. She always picks the moment, the best moment. <laughs> Watching flare at like 78. <laughs> like 78, yes, indeed. <laughs> Good. So. Oh, yeah, eye tracking as well. Well, you know, in the end, that wasn't any more efficient than just flying the procedure because we had to do that circling. But hopefully you saw. Oh, don't lose all the charts, please. How sometimes you have to just manage. There's the town. So I'll pilot off. Gear down. Flaps three. Flight director's off. And we'll take the bird on. So we're approaching the VOR. Now we go three degrees down. That should line us up. So we go flat full. There it is, starting down. Not too much. And we're on the speed brakes. Got medium water brake in, cabin to check. We'll head over to the right gently. We don't want to point too much at that or we'll trigger a GPWS. Just trying to keep three degrees. What was the going attitude? Let's put that in. 3,500. So I can just do that on here, which is great. Absolutely love having this FCU. Good stuff. There is a landing check in here. Most airlines will just do it from the ECAM. Uh, yeah. So agree, landing checks complete. I can see two whites, two reds over there. Maybe three whites. Let's keep it coming down. Oh, not that much. It's a little over responsive there. Traffic, top left, 
Yeah. Wind is slightly from the left. Oh, actually, it's pretty much down the runway, so we'll just turn as per normal. Aero Sky 338, final approach to land, Porto Natalis. I'm just going to move the microphone down a bit. Minimum. I think it's a narrow runway as well. Good headwind though. So that's too, too much, too much pitching down. That's my fault there. I don't know if it, it seems very responsive on the pitch, but I'm sure it's me. No touchdown zone either. I'm currently about 10 miles, uh, 10 miles east of November 10, 30, at, uh, 20, retard, driving at 220 knots. 5. Uh, Roger, I'm currently, uh, 6 miles away from the Max reverse. Now. So what I think it should Nose down. Brakes have engaged. Reverses, speed brakes. Okay, uh, just let me know. Um, oh, no trouble. Oh, uh, yeah, all reports on a short final for, uh, Manual brakes. We won't even need to use the turning around spot. <laughs> That's not bad going. Let's just clear the runway. Oh, not that much. <laughs> yeah, this is a middle of nothing airport. This airport's only open a couple of times a year. It's just a small, small terminal. One stand, so we're not all going to fit. <laughs> And there we go. I'm going to leave everything out for the replay. I think we made it. That was a pretty fun approach. I'm glad we got to do that. Oh, there's a marshaller. Look at that. Who provided the marshaller? Yeah, and then to vacate, it would be a right turnout. There we go. So, thank you all for flying along. We won't do the after landing flow and so on because we're going to look at the replay in just a moment. But yeah, I think that worked out. A little bit low on final, perhaps. Um which will be down to the uh, fact that I was just every time I pitched forwards trying to correct a little bit high, I was getting too much nose down. Don't know if that's my settings or um, just me being used to the 7.8, which is perhaps a bit less responsive in pitch. I don't know. Interesting one. But there we go. Uh, and yeah, that was a bit of a, <laughs> a noticeable skid at the end. <laughs> Tomango says, once a 320 pilot, always a 320 pilot. Um, yeah, that was that's fun. And it's a narrow runway here, so it gives you that strange visual picture as well. Let's put the speed brakes down. Rip flat full. So I think we'll have some colleagues landing shortly. And then we'll have our, our replay. But thank you for flying along. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, beautiful. I mean, this has got to be the most spectacular, if not one of the most spectacular flights we've ever done. What a beautiful part of the world. And what a privilege we get to fly to these places in the sim. I mean, just, just brilliant. Right. We won't wait too long. But thank you to those who have flown along. Really, really appreciate it. And it's always nice to have company on these flights. I'm not sure. Yeah, I can't actually see anyone. For the Nautilus, aerospace 402, the four miles final, one way to Um So here we are. We're parked up here. Uh, and look at the view of the National Park. Great flight. Loved it. Say bye to the FO. Go give her some treats. Yeah, the FO will get some treats. She's back with me. She was with me for the landing. She didn't get in the way. She was very well behaved for once. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, well, thank you to our colleagues for flying along. I will disconnect from Vatsin. Apologies, we couldn't stay. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, we, we, we actually did some good separation from each other on that one. <laughs> uh, let's jump back into the airplane. And let's load up the replay. Ooh, I am stretching the abilities of my computer to uh, do this, which is fair enough, I think. Right, let's have a look. Quite a late turn on final, but that's normal. Oh, I think. Oh, we just have a window. There we go. Should have done that.
good stuff and let's see what it looks like Ah, so I, I just, this has got to be narrow, isn't it? This doesn't look 45 to me. I think perhaps the white lines are narrowed. Into the flare. Oh, yeah. Well, that's about as good as we've ever managed on the uh, Airbus, isn't it? <laughs> Not too bad. Helped by quite a straightforward, nice headwind. No touchdown zone markers, so we definitely floated a little bit more, but we did cross the threshold a tad low, so... Yeah, that's all we can ask for. And then it stopped. I mean, this is unrealistically quick. That would have been an absolutely horrendous deceleration for passengers. <laughs> you would definitely need to uh, to go and backtrack it from this one. But there we go. Right, let's put it back on approach. Somewhere reasonable. Have I done it? Have I finally pushed it too far? 600 feet. Good stuff. And there's a the town. Think that should be good so i'm going to say thank you all so much for coming along today thank you for flying along thank you for chatting thank you for just watching and uh and joining us i really really appreciate it if you've enjoyed do please leave a like on the way out it makes a huge huge difference to the channel uh more 787 tutorials are in the works i am i'm still working on those uh so yeah um do stay tuned and do subscribe if you'd like to see those and we'll talk more about 787 in future uh thank you so much for the donations and uh, super chats really really appreciate the support and thank you to the moderators for looking after us, of course. So that's it for now then. We will see you all in another video or live stream very soon. Keep safe and well. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.